few summers ago, I was backing up my family photos onto my three terabyte external drive. My youngest daughter, who was a toddler at the time, comes running by and knocks over the drive while the photos are being copied. The photos were lost. I sent that drive to two forensic experts, and neither of them could recover the data. I longed for the time when we used to record our kids' first everything in printed photos, baby albums, and scrapbooks. I remember when my husband and I bought our first house. A package arrived from my mother. I opened that package to find a shoebox full of photos and my baby album. My oldest daughter is lucky enough to have a baby album, too, because when she was young, I was still in the habit of developing photos and printing them. But technology changes habits. I no longer print photos, or rarely do. Will I make my photos available an online storage for my children? <laughs> How can I ensure that those photos will be available for them when they're adults? New technology is coming to solve these problems. New technology that can store data for generations to come. Technology that can ensure nothing can be deleted or modified. And that technology is the blockchain. So you may be asking yourself, what is this blockchain? In its simplest form, the blockchain is a distributed ledger. But it is so much more than that. I'm a patent attorney. My background is in computer science. I've been practicing patent law for 15 years. When I first started practicing, my clients were diligently filing patents on internet-related innovations. And I am seeing the same trend now with blockchain innovations. In fact, in the last quarter of this year, venture capitalists have invested $173 million in blockchain innovations and startups. That's more than the, the two previous quarters combined. The blockchain was designed for Bitcoin. It's the underlying architecture that supports Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an electronic currency. And while Bitcoin is interesting, what's even more interesting is the blockchain that supports it and makes it work. There are many different types of chains. There are public chains, private chains, sub-chains. But the Bitcoin blockchain was the first of its kind, and it's a public chain. It's probably the best example of a public chain we have to date. While Bitcoin has made some incredible innovations to our computing community as well as financial system, the blockchain is even more revolutionary. Because the technologies are quite old, but it's the fusion, the fusion of all of these technologies together that makes the blockchain so revolutionary. There are three aspects, technical features of the blockchain that make it so revolutionary. The first is that it provides an immutable preservation of data integrity. The second, is that it helps empower the crowd. The third is that the blockchain solves the user identity problem. So let's look at the preservation of data integrity. The blockchain is specifically designed to help ensure nothing can be deleted or modified. As the name implies, the blockchain is a linear sequence of linked data blocks. It's constantly growing. The blockchain is run on the backs of home computers by people just like you and me who are devoting a portion of their computing resources to keep the chain going. These are mining nodes. And this is a screenshot from last week of all of the mining nodes that were accessible online at a moment in time. As you can see, it's a 
global effort on a grassroots scale to help power the chain. Let's look at how this blockchain might work. To send funds to a friend, you must have their public key. The public key is what is used to identify users on the chain. That data is processed by the blockchain network, which is a peer-to-peer -peer st network structure. And a quorum of those mining nodes must approve the transaction in order for it to be written to the chain. The mining nodes will approve that transaction so long as the public key is correct, the private key is correct, and you have sufficient funds. Each transaction that's written to the chain and stored in the data blocks, the details of that transaction and many other transactions are recorded in the data block, in addition to an electronic fingerprint, a fingerprint that it is a one-way function, a hash function, which is a software function that creates a copy of the data, a copy that can never be recreated. So each block in the chain, it records the details of the transaction, as well as a fingerprint, a hash, of the previous block. And in this orderly structure, you have a chain where if one block were to be modified, the entire chain would be corrupt. So it's easy to detect any tampering or modification. If someone were to try to successfully hack the chain and modify it in a way that could potentially um, cause it to uh, be recreated, then they would have to modify every single block in the chain instantaneously, which would be thousands and thousands of computers across the, no the world would have to be updated. The chain would have to be updated on these computers, as well as hundreds of thousands of mirroring sites that are mirroring the chain. So although theoretically possible that the chain could be hacked, it is computationally impractical. We have a chain link architecture that preserves data integrity, that helps make sure that nothing can be deleted or modified. Data is written in a way that is practically written in stone. The next aspect is that the blockchain empowers the crowd. Now, the traditional model on the internet is a centralized model where you have a centralized server and client, server and client nodes. The centralized server maintains control over all the transactions that are processed. The blockchain embraces a different model, where no single node, no single entity controls any transactions on the chain. With the internet model, where you have a server that controls all transactions, it's embraced by the companies that make profit on the internet, like eBay and um, Airbnb. These companies love this model. They get to take a cut of every transaction that's processed through their network. The blockchain directly connects buyers and sellers together. And there's no middleman. The blockchain eliminates the middleman. So no longer do we have an electronic marketplace where a company can take a cut of all transactions. We have a situation where Buyers and sellers are directly connected. Programmers across the world have developed a shared data layer that runs on top of the chain. Companies have developed products that can run on the chain, like Uber. So a similar app to Uber is called Lazuz, and it's a ride-sharing app that's powered on the chain, and it directly connects riders and drivers. So the rider gets to pick their driver, and the driver gets to set their rate and no intermediary is taking a cut on that transaction. The writer can look at all of these reviews, reviews that haven't been scrubbed, reviews that are written in stone in the chain forever for all to see. Open Bazaar is an electronic marketplace like eBay. It's an auction site. And it directly connects buyers and sellers and eliminates the middleman. So there's no company like eBay that takes a cut of the transactions.
So by eliminating the middleman and embracing this peer-to-peer -peer distributed network architecture, the blockchain is revolutionizing our electronic commerce, our digital commerce world. Not only does this peer-to-peer -peer architecture eliminate the middleman, but it is also more secure and robust relative to the centralized model. Because in the centralized model, if that server node goes down, the whole network goes down. No transactions can be processed. But in the chain, if one node goes down, the chain still survives because there are thousands and thousands of other nodes that are processing the chain and keeping it going. So we've touched upon the preservation of data integrity, the advantages of decentralization, and now we're going to discuss how the blockchain solves the user identity problem. One of the problems that plagues the internet today is the fact that you're, there is no accountability and verification for users online. Imagine cyberbullying would be much less of an issue if instead of hiding behind some anonymous handler masquerading as somebody else on the internet, instead of hiding, you were traceable as you. The blockchain defines ownership of identity based on public and private key pairs. It has a strong ownership of identity. Your identity on the internet can be revoked. It can be taken from you at any time. You can be censored, and no such thing can happen on the chain because you own that private and public key pair. That is forever yours. And there is no single entity on the chain that would be able to revoke that from you, would be able to take that away. It's yours. Back in 1993, when the internet was just publicly emerging. Few that knew of it even called it the internet. It was known as the super information highway. Few could have looked into their crystal ball to see the coming of Google, Facebook, and YouTube. Think of how your lives have been forever changed by the internet. Think of the information revolution that followed in the decade to come. The blockchain is driving a similar revolution, and innovations are going to change our digital world. We'll have a situation where technology will be able to provide a private blockchain, where we can store our data our photos, and share it for generations to come without worrying that the data will be deleted or modified. One thing is clear. There is a gold mine of intellectual property to be had, whether it is manifested in open source or proprietary. There are tremendous opportunities for blockchain innovations. It's at the forefront of modern computer science. We're going to have a blockchain revolution. Support the blockchain. <laughs> Denote, donate a portion of your computing resources to help power the chain. Thank you.